standing here with Bob Fabry. He's a forage specialist. Bob, can you tell us a bit more about what you're going to do with the samples that we made from the grass? Yes, sure. I've got the sample here and uh, we're going to give it to the, my colleagues here and I'll show you what's, uh, what's happening. Let's go. Yep. The samples are coming in. They are scanned by the handheld of our sample taker, which contains all the information we need to fully analyze the sample. The bags are being opened here. On the little plate, we spread out the sample so that it can be dried in a normal way. And at the end of this belt, the sample is being weighed, so we have to weigh pre-drying and after drying, we weigh it again. Then we have to sample without water and we can measure the dry matter. So here the samples are being weighed and put in the trolley. Once this trolley is filled, we can put them in the oven where they will be dried overnight. One of our ovens where all the silage samples are in. They stay here overnight. We do not dry them to 100 degrees. We don't do that because otherwise your uh, sugars and your proteins will start uh, evolving. Uh, they will have different shapes so that will interfere with the results. That's why we don't dry them that high, uh, but we dry them air dry, as, uh, as we say. So now it's the next day, samples are dry and we grind them here. We grind them so that we can analyze all the whole sample on into one millimeter. As you can see here, he's pushing the sample in the grinder and it comes out in a little jar. That jar is a special jar so that we can analyze it by near. This is our near infrared sensor. Uh, this is where we do all the analysis. And as you can see, and there is a little bit of space left at the bottom of the jar, which goes on the sensor, which is over here. And that sends out an infrared light. That light is being partly absorbed and partly sent back. And the way how much is being absorbed gives you a spectrum, as we can see here. And that is the fingerprint of the sample. And by measuring that spectrum, we can analyze all the important parameters on the report. So what makes this way of analyzing unique? Um, this, this way of analyzing makes it possible to analyze really fast. There are some parameters, for example, the digestible organic matter normally takes one, two weeks. And in this way, we can do it really, really fast, as you uh, just saw. Another thing which makes this unique in comparison to uh, agricultural machines is that the database we've built up with all the samples all over the world it contains thousands and thousands and thousands of samples, whereas the, the databases on those, those machines are really smaller, uh, so they cannot analyze it as good as we can analyze it here. Because the machine isn't the hardest part, it's really the database behind it and keep, keeping that up to date. And that's why we have a lot of quality uh, controls here built in to make sure it always works and uh, it always has the highest quality as, uh, as your fans wants. So these are the ovens where we analyze the crude ash content. The grass contains organic material and inorganic material. Organic material we can uh, analyze by NIRS, but inorganic material we can't. That is done in these ovens. We fill up a sample, put them in here, and we heat the temperature up into 550 degrees. And that way all organic material is burned. And what's, what's left is the inorganic material, and that's uh, crude ash, so sand and minerals and trace elements. At the moment, my colleague here is, is weighing out the sample. He did the same well uh, before, the, before the analysis, where he weighed in the sample. Now he's weighing out the sample. And all of the organic material has been burned away, and only the inorganic material has, uh, has been left. If, if you look at the report, this is the, one of the fewer parameters we still do in the classical way. And that's because the infrared sensor does not work as good on inorganic material as on organic material. And because crude ash is really, really important in, for example, the um, feed evaluation, like FEM uh, or other energy parameters, we wanted to, to have the highest quality as possible. 
And that's why we still do this in the, uh, in the old-fashioned way.